Hello, how are you? Since the protest started, so many lives have been lost along the way. So many people have been kidnapped, abducted, and some of them are still missing till date. On August 19th, Free Kenya Movement Chairman Bob Jaggi was abducted in Mlolongo while he was going back home. <laughs> After 32 days in captivity, Later on, Bob Jaggi was released, and this is how he narrated his story. Listen to this. I was whisked away into a building and ushered into a small and very dark room. It was the size of six feet by four feet. I was left on the floor handcuffed at the back and blindfolded for two days without food. Only some water. That was... Viva Comrades Viva. Viva. Viva Comrades Viva. 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 Sorry. Uh, good afternoon, members of the Fourth Estate. Thank you for joining us today for this uh, presser. I'm going to read out my statement, which is in writing, and thereafter I'm going to share it with you also for publication. Uh, the title is Bob Njagi. Kitengela 3 Press and Public Statement on Recent Abductions. Revolutionary Greetings. I take this opportunity to welcome members of the mainstream media and social media fraternity as they cover this press and public statement for the victims of state abduction, commonly referred to as the Kitengela 3, namely Bob Njagi, Longton Jamil, and Asley Longton. Today, Wednesday, the 9th of October, marks 20 days since our release from abduction and forceful detention without trial. During these few days, we have been undergoing medical treatment, both psychosocial support and physical examination in various health centers, hence the prolonged silence since our release. Prior to our abduction on the 19th of August 2024, Free Kenya Movement had been on the forefront of the protest demonstrations against the Dra Draconian Finance Bill 2024, which later mutated into pro-good governance demos that demanded for the dissolution of parliament and the resignation of President William Ruto and his Deputy Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa for gross violations of the Constitution and failing to uphold and protect the sovereignty of the Kenyan people. During the protest, I was singled out and targeted by security agencies for leading the protest. I was illegally arrested twice on two separate occasions. On both occasions, I was violently arrested and physically assaulted by the police and denied my right to seek counsel or communicate with my family members. I was presented before a court to answer to the fictitious and trumped up charges. One of these cases has since been dismissed by the prosecution for lack of evidence. Why then did they have to arrest uh, and subject me to inhumane treatment while knowing so well that I was innocent and they lacked any evidence? The other matter will be heard on the 14th of October, 2024 in Kajiado Magistrates Court number one. It is important to note that all demos, we have always notified the police in accordance to Article 37 of the Public Order Act and further requested them for security during the demos. 
As the demos intensified countrywide, we all witnessed the introduction of hooligans, whose aim was to disrupt the peaceful protest by causing chaos, looting, stealing, and destruction of property. The aim was to create panic and fear amongst the business community, as well as to deter the Gen Zs from participating in the demos. The police and sympathizers of Kenya Kwanzaa administration were quick to blame the protesters before undertaking any investigation to ascertain the truth. This strategy, however, did not deter us from proceeding with peaceful protests, much to the dissatisfaction of those who had organized the thugs. The police, instead of arresting or stopping those who are looting from the business community, focused on arresting and shooting and killing innocent protesters. Many businesses in various towns and cities suffered huge losses as a result of looting by hired goons. The Gen Z-led protests have been calling for good governance, accountability, and a fight against corruption. Hence, there is no room for thuggery or hooliganism. It will be counterproductive to what we are demonstrating against. Most of the shops looted have CCTV cameras. Why haven't the police used that footage to identify and arrest the real criminals? During the anti-finance bill protest, many young Kenyans have been injured, illegally arrested, abducted, and others died through extrajudicial killings. There have been serious gross violations on human rights that amount to crimes against humanity by security agencies. Government institutions taxed to the role of oversight, such as the, overs the Independent Police Oversight Authority, have clearly no powers to arrest or prosecute any rogue police officers. Their attempts to investigate the police have been distracted and hampered in order to cover up the truth. The Kenya police have violated the constitution severally, yet they are the ones who are entrusted with enforcing the same laws. The use of excessive force such as live bullets, water cannons, tear gas, etc., while concealing their faces to avoid identification has been the most modest operandi. To date, no police officer has been brought to book to answer to the charges of assault, misconduct, abuse of office, use of excessive force, abduction, murder, etc. This only points to the reluctance of government to undertake any meaningful investigations that will uncover the truth and reveal those who have been sponsoring the goons. On the 18th of August 2024, I received a call from Honorable Jimmy Wanjigi to accompany him the following day to Nairobi area police station where he had been summoned to appear before the police. On the 19th of August, I arrived at Nairobi area police station at 2 p.m. only to be, to be informed that the venue had been changed and that he had been asked to go to Nairobi Regional Police Command in Milimani Road. Honorable Jimmy Wanjigi was later put under arrest and whisked away to Kamkunji police station. We spent the whole afternoon and evening there with his family and lawyer, seeking for his release, but the police insisted on holding him until the following day in order to arraign him in court. My colleagues then dropped me off at railway's bus terminus where I boarded a matatu to Kitengela for Kitengela. Mm -hmm. On route to Kitengela, the bus stopped at Mlolongo for some passengers to alight. It was then that four masked men, hooded men, got into the vehicle shouting, Huyu akwana bunduki, while pointing at me. I was immediately alarmed by this assertion and upon realizing what was happening, I shouted my name, Bob Njagi, and informed all the passengers that I was being targeted because of the demos. The officers shoved me out of the bus forcefully while assault assaulting me with kicks, blows, slaps, jacking me off my feet and carrying me shoulder high into the waiting car, an awaiting white car. The officers had cautioned other passengers not to take any photos or videos. However, some passengers managed to secretly record the incident. Inside the white vehicle were five men, two in the front and three at the back. We drove for close to an hour well, all the time I was assaulted until we came to a sudden stop. I was then blindfolded and handcuffed at the back and moved into a second awaiting vehicle that had four men. Two sat at the back on either side and two at the front. We drove for complete silence for another 30 minutes until we arrived in our destination. 32 days of terror. I was whisked away into a building and ushered into a small and very dark room. It was the size of six feet by four feet I was left on the floor handcuffed at the back and blindfolded for two days without food, only some water. That was Aluta continua. Sorry. Viva Bob Jaggi, viva. Viva. Viva Bob Jaggi, viva. Viva.
Viva Converse Viva. Viva. Viva Converse Viva. 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 Sorry. 32 days of terror. I was whisked into a building and ushered into a small, very dark room. It was a size of six by four. I was left on the floor handcuffed under the back and blindfolded for two days without food. Only some water that was administered occasionally by one of the men. On the third day, the handcuffs were removed from the backside and my hands were cuffed on the front side. I was then moved into another room. The second room had a smaller, uh, had, a, had a small withered mattress and a blanket. This is where I stayed locked up, handcuffed, blindfolded for the next 30 days. The room was completely sealed with no light during the daytime or nighttime. The only human interaction I got was when the door would be opened twice a day. In the morning, they would open and hand me a cup of tea while removing the waste bucket and replacing it with another one. During lunch hour, I was served with a meal that would barely keep me alive. The food was unpalatable, but I forced myself to eat in order to get some strength and to live to see another day, hoping and praying that God would rescue me from this ordeal. My health depreciated very fast and lost a lot of weight. Uh, I was dehydrated and lost a lot of weight during the 32 days of abduction. Once a week, I would be led blindfolded into a room where I showered for 10 minutes before returning back to my cell. I was held in communicado throughout and my rights and uh, throughout my abduction and denied all freedoms and rights enshrined in our constitution the right to a fair trial freedom of association freedom of speech freedom from torture and freedom from abduction on september 20th 2024 at about 12:30 a.m. two men came to the cell and asked me to get up and get dressed i was then taken outside the building into an awaiting vehicle they removed the handcuffs and replaced them with plastic tie knots, but I remained blindfolded. We drove around the vehicle for about 30 minutes in complete silence. Finally, the car stopped and one of the men informed me that they were going to release me, gave me some money, 400 shillings for bus fare, and removed me from the car. They asked me to sit on the ground and, 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 and to remain there until they left. I had the doors of, of uh, shutting and the cars speeding off. By the time I removed my blindfold, they had already disappeared into the dark. I stumbled on my feet and started walking without knowing where I was. In about 15 minutes, I got to Chigoni Police Station. It was there that I reported the matter, which was booked in the OB. I requested the officers to contact my family, which they did. The OCS Chigoni Police Station arrived at about 2 a.m., where she asked me to write a statement. I complied, and later my family arri members arrived, picked me up, and took me home. I have since been recuperating healing and from this horrific experience. I wish to take this opportunity to extend my hand, heartfelt gratitude and thank all Kenyans of goodwill who have prayed, lobbied for our release from abduction. I wish to single out my family, my parents and siblings and relatives, friends, the Law Society of Kenya, the Defenders Coalition, the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights, comrades of the Free Kenya Movement, various human rights organizations, civil society organizations, the mainstream media and social media fraternity, leaders from various political, uh, including Honorable Jimmy Wanjigi, Honorable Kalonzo Msioka, Honorable Eugene Wamalwa, Honorable Wajakoya, Senator Umtata, Honorable Kioni, activists from the social justice movements, and the judiciary for their exemplary, exemplary role of justice. I thank God for being faithful and for the continued gift of life and good health. I take that I take note that the petition against the IG and CS for Interior is pending in the High Court, though the Judge Lawrence Mugambi has since recused himself from the case. We intend to pursue this case to its most logical conclusion. The state should be held responsible for our abduction and that of many other Kenyans since it is their duty to provide security to all persons and protect the lives and property. I have since reconciled myself with the ordeal so as to heal. I have since forgiven my captors and asked God to forgive them too. I, however, will pursue justice and plan to sue the government for this ordeal in order to stop any other such abductions. I call, for this I call upon this government to immediately put an end to all cases of demonstrations from the year 2023 to 2024. Furthermore, we call on the government to recognize and compensate families who have lost their loved ones during this protest as a sign of goodwill, honor, and respect. My spirit is more emboldened, my heart is more fortified, my body is more resilient, and my mind is more focused. 
I shall continue to lobby for good governance and accountability. I remain to be a strong voice for the weak, the marginalized in society, more so persons with disability, orphans, and widows. Since the 2018 Finance Bill, we initiated the Free Kenya Movement as an alternative platform through which we would lobby for social justice, constitutional reforms, economic and political reforms, and have engaged in several legal battles challenging bad laws. We have been and continue to collect signatures from registered voters in order to initiate a people's dialogue, otherwise known as a referendum. You can access the referendum and signature collection portal on www.freekenya.co.ke or www.freekenyasignatures.com. End of statement. People power. Higher power. People power. Higher power. Higher power. People power. Higher power. People power. Who are the people? We are the people. Who are the people? We are the people. Watu ni nguvu. Nguvu ni watu. Watu ni nguvu. Nguvu ni watu. Nguvu ni watu. Watu ni nguvu. Nguvu ni watu. Watu ni nguvu. Watu ni nani? Watu ni sisi. Watu ni nani? Watu ni sisi. Thank you. Tunaanzisha mchakato wa referendum ambaye tutazuru taifa yote ya Kenya tukisanya sahihi milioni moja ili tuweze kuleta mabadiliko ya kikatiba ambayo yataleta afueni kwa mwananchi wa kawaida sivyo sivyo mnakubaliana na hiyo safari